Welcome again to everybody for tonight's discussion on how Lehigh is going to look in the fall semester of 2020. This discussion is going to focus on housing and dining and health and safety. So for many of you, it's welcome back. Uh, we just finished off one discussion on student engagement and we are now starting kind of our second in the double header tonight where we're going to focus on this topic. We'll be joined by a number of panelists and our intent is to answer as many questions as we can. We have uh, a very uh, informative announcement that came out on Friday, which is driving a lot of the questions that are coming in. We can already see that. My name is Chris Halliday. I'm the Associate Vice President for Human Resources here at Lehigh University. And I'll be joined by colleagues from our Student Auxiliary Services and our Health and Wellness Center. You'll notice at the bottom of your screen is a Q&A box uh, as we go through this discussion. If you have questions, please post them in there. We'll be monitoring that and trying to insert them as time allows during our discussion. Also remember, if you have to drop off early, we'll be recording this whole session. So uh, if you do miss it some bit, or if you know of somebody who wasn't able to join, uh, you can go to the COVID-19 information site on the Lehigh webpage and find the recording there. Well, we're glad you joined us, and I am now going to introduce our host for tonight. Brent Stringfellow is our Associate Vice President for Facilities here at Lehigh University. Brent, could you start with the introductions? Well, I certainly can. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, as Chris said, um, we are um, uh, excited, pleased to be able to address some of the more specific issues that, that may have emerged from some of our previous conversations and town halls that we had. Uh, we're following up uh, on the uh, most immediate town hall with President Simon and Provost Durbin, as well as I know many of you joined us last week when we were initially talking about some of the facilities issues and health and safety issues on campus. So thank you uh, for those who are returning and welcome to those who are joining for the first time. And really what we're looking to be able to provide is more in-depth details on some of the questions that have arisen uh, both since the previous town halls and, and the announcement on Friday. Joining me for that discussion is David Joseph, who's our Executive Director of Student Auxiliary Services, Ozzy Briner, who's Director of Housing Services, Chris Diversa, Associate Director of Housing Services, and Dr. Sarah Stevens, who's the Medical Director at our Health and Wellness Center. So I'd like to uh, uh, extend a warm welcome to all of them as we get started. Um, with that being said, I think what we're going to try to do is jump immediately into Q&A uh, because we know there's a lot of questions that are out there and uh, we wanna get, get right to it. So with that, uh, Chris, uh, what's, our, what's our first question? Yeah, let me, let me start. We had um, well over 400 questions that have come from the community and we'll also field some new ones tonight. Let me make one note though, just as we start this, that for many of you, if you've been on the East Coast, you've also been battling the weather or a tropical storm that's been passing by. So we have as well here, we may experience a few technology glitches along the way. We think we have them under control, uh, but we understand that a number of people who have been logging on are also experiencing those difficulties. So we'll all do as best we can. So Brent, let me throw this out to you and the, the panel as a whole. We appreciate all of you taking the time tonight to talk with us. There was a big announcement on Friday and some of the things that uh, Lehigh had been planning for the fall have starting to look a little bit different. What can you tell us about what we might expect that's now change? So um, I think obviously the biggest piece is we now have uh, a very clear idea of the expected student body that will be living on campus, as well as a sense for what the campus experience is going to look like for students um, who will be remote, as well as students who may be uh, living off campus uh, uh, it, adjacent to Lehigh. Uh, that extends most obviously, and I'm gonna turn it over to um, uh, Ozzy and David to maybe speak a little bit to the housing and dining experiences, which are probably the, the, uh, the foundation of what we think of as the residential life experience. But you'll see changes uh, throughout the campus based on um, what uh, this model will look like in terms of how we are going to be operating some of the common areas such as the library, the gym, um, and the safety plans that we have been uh, working on throughout the summer are now being implemented and we have a much uh, clearer idea of uh, what type of uh, population we'll have on campus. So um, 
I think uh, to those who have been on previous calls, we've talked about that there'll be changes, there are physical changes that will be observed. The biggest things are limiting the numbers of people in common spaces, making sure people are wearing face coverings and, and observing social distancing. Being mindful of the fact that some of the most exciting parts of student life and being at college are present the biggest challenges to us. And balancing the fact that we want students to have a unique, um, fulfilling experience while still preserving the safety of them and those in the Lehigh community and the broader community is of utmost importance. So we're working really hard to find that balance to really, uh, to allow that. That being said, um, I think as everybody knows at this point, now that we're in the, I think, what, fifth month of this pandemic, and we've all seen the impact in terms of the ability to do things as we had done in previous times. So um, I think that's kind of the overview. Uh, I can go into little details about specific spaces. With that, though, I think probably jump right into some of the changes we might see in, ho in housing and maybe dining. Uh, so with that, maybe I'll turn it over to Ozzy. Well, things will definitely be different in housing this semester as compared to others. Uh, we do know the population that we've invited back to campus are our first years uh, who are choosing to come back to campus um, and also uh, sophomores, juniors, and seniors who have extenuating circumstances uh, who will also be joining us uh, after there is an approval process. Uh, the housing on campus that we typically have for first years will be different. Uh, we are going to be housing all of our first years in single bedrooms. Uh, typically, that is not the preferred uh, type of housing that stu uh, first year students like. Everybody wants to have a roommate and they want to have a wonderful experience and they want to be in each other's weddings and meet their lifelong friends. That may still happen, but it's going to be in single bedrooms. We're going to limit the number of students uh, pretty much in hallways to the point where we're going to have six people sharing a bathroom. Um, so some hallways will be as small as six. Other hall may, hallways may have more because there will be mul multiple bathrooms. Um, we will be housing our first year students uh, in upper class housing because we have to to spread them out to meet those uh, social distancing demands. So there will be uh, first years living in suites, apartments, and in small houses this year based upon the number of students who wish to come back. So it's going to be different. Uh, it's going to be a, a unique year for sure. Um, but uh, we're here to try to explain as best we can uh, how it still might be a fulfilling uh, experience, um, but it's going to be uh, uh, certainly something different than ever used before here at the university. DJ? Yeah, I think we're excited to have students coming back to campus. We need a little bit of activity. It'll be fun to have people here. Um, the foremost thing is in both housing and dining is health and safety, as Ozzy had mentioned. Um, but on the dining side, um, it, it's going to look similar to previous years in the way of healthy and nutritious food options, all you care to eat dining. We're looking at four uh, student restaurants at this stage. We've taken a faculty staff dining area and have converted it. Um, we're going to have retail operations and food trucks providing additional variety. Um, there'll be a variety of meal plans to choose from still. You're gonna get excellent service and caring staff. We offer convenient locations. We're gonna have vegan, vegetarian, and allergen uh, options just like we always have. We're gonna have a full-time on-campus dietitian like we always have, but it is gonna be different as we've all talked about, everything's gonna be different is that we're limited in our seating capacity. We're gonna have distancing requirements. Students are gonna to need to wear a mask even inside the dining halls, except when they're eating. Uh, there'll be no self-service. We used to have students go up and get their own food. That will not happen for a while. Uh, we'll have visual signage guiding students around the place. We're increasing our grab and go options across campus. You'll see plexiglass barriers between the staff and the students. 
Um, our hours of operation will remain pretty similar, although we're gonna be flexible throughout the year and keep adjusting those depending on the final number of students on campus. Um, there'll be hand sanitizer stations, both in the residence halls and, and, in, the, and in the dining areas. Um, we're gonna encourage students to use mobile ordering and takeout options. So we're looking at a, a variety of things to make it safe, but still be able to come in, get your food, eat in the dining hall if you want to, again, limited capacity, or take it out. Good information. And that's really uh, important for those who will be on campus. So let's explore that a little bit first. Um, are we gonna be able to host all first year students who wanna come to campus? Will they be able to find a place to live? We do anticipate uh, being able to host all first years who want to come back to campus. But again, we do encourage everyone to think about the campus experience. And if uh, the remote option is a viable option and uh, your home situation promotes that option, we certainly encourage you to consider it seriously as has been told to you in the various communications. Uh, the, the goal of this whole uh, uh, adventure has been to de-densify campus. So the fewer students on campus would be the better. Um, but uh, if students, uh, first year students indicate they wanna come back to campus, uh, we hope and anticipate to be able to accommodate them. And when will first year students know their housing assignments? So that's a process that's already started. Um, we're currently finishing up with configuration and setting everything up as singles, limited to no more than six people in a bathroom. Um, we've asked all first years to indicate on a fall housing survey if they were interested in returning to campus or preferred to study remotely. And I'd like to encourage everybody to fill that in Wednesday at 11 p.m. Um, we really need to hear back from the majority of the students before we can close that and move forward. Um, so given if everybody's able to do that and meet that timeline and we don't have to make phone calls and send emails, um, we're hoping to have housing assignments done early next week at the absolute latest um, so that we can let students know where they're living and also open up the move-in process for students. And, and speaking of room assignments, if I may add, uh, I think uh, some of the questions out there are, I've, I've, uh, before I had a roommate I wanted to live with, can I at least have that person on the floor with me or nearby? And I think it's our intention to take those pairings that we had and get those students together on the same hallway. Uh, good, yeah, I could see that question coming up. That's very good. Chris, I'm gonna come back to you because there's a little bit of a glitch when you were talking. You said, uh, you mentioned a very important deadline that you're trying to get this information back by. Can you say that again? Sure, so we've asked all first years to complete a full housing survey by Wednesday at 11 p.m. to indicate if they would like on-campus housing. Very good, all right, thank you. So a lot of questions are coming in as well from sophomores, right? So all the upperclassmen were impacted by the decision this last Friday. Um, sophomores in particular are trying to figure out what that means for them. Do you have any guidance for sophomores, particularly around housing arrangements that they had already thought that they had made? You know, what's gonna happen? Do they, do they have to go to the lottery again? How might we handle sophomores who are gonna live on campus? Um, sophomores who go through a petition process. Again, part of that communication on Monday, there was a link to a petition process. And the announcement by the university that second, third, and fourth year students are, uh, have been uh, asked to go remote or are not invited back to campus, you know, we're really suggesting that they take that seriously. The only people we expect on campus as second, third, and fourth years are folks with real extenuating circumstances who just cannot succeed by, uh, by living remotely or taking classes remotely. Uh, they have been asked to fill out a survey 
uh, so that they can be reviewed. The petition can be reviewed by folks from the Student Affairs Division. Um, and not everyone who applies to that is going to be told yes. There's quite a few, you know, there's, there's some significant reasons that may be considered. For example, uh, you know, international students who are currently in the United States or currently living on campus uh, will be able to petition and uh, potentially live on campus. Students with basic needs that aren't be able to be met at home, such as uh, safe, uh, safe and reliable housing or food or internet or computer access. Uh, students who need a specific course in order to graduate this next year as a senior. Um, and, and there could be some other extraordinary reasons and you have the opportunity to explain what that is. But again, uh, it's not going to be wide open for any uh, second, third or fourth year uh, to be granted the, the ability to stay on campus. It will be severely limited. What about for spring semester? Can you make any predictions yet? If I'm a sophomore, will I be able to come back in the spring? Um, I, you know, certainly uh, we, we really don't know what the spring semester, we barely know what this, the first semester, first uh, fall semester is gonna look like. So mm -hmm. to predict what's going to happen in the spring seems a little bit uh, dawning. Uh, Certainly, I think it would be everyone's wish here on this call that the virus situation would change and we'd be able to invite uh, everyone back to campus, but we certainly can't predict that. Um, but if the university is able to open up further, uh, certainly we would be able to offer housing uh, to those folks who we did not invite back for the fall semester. Uh, but that is certainly yet to be seen. Right, a lot of unknowns in there. Let me ask this one, this is a little bit of a spin on that. What if I'm a first year student, but for the fall, I wanna take my classes fully remote. Do I give up my ability to come to campus in the spring if I choose to, or will I have a spot? Not at all. So what we've indicated to any of the first years as they've been letting us know that they're gonna spend the fall remote um, is that we'll be back in touch in the fall semester, late October, early November, as we know more about what the spring semester looks like, um, so that we're able to work with them to find out if they plan to come to campus on the, in the spring semester, and then um, we can prepare them for the housing options that they would have. And, and let me add, we'll have the space, even if we still need to de-densify, because we're opening up a brand new uh, residence facility, uh, Singleton Hitch Meta Houses, which has, uh, I don't know what their capacity would be, around 405, but socially distanced and de-densified, I'm not sure, but we, we should have plenty of room at that stage. Good, okay. What about- that would be, Just to clarify, that would be about probably 200 beds because of the type of arrangement that we would have in that facility, even with social distancing, presuming that was still in effect. But that's 200 more beds than we have in the fall. That's correct. Okay, very good. What about fraternities and sororities? Are those houses just going to be empty? Um, at this point, uh, they will be empty. Uh, you know, the goal of the, the plan was to de-densify campus, and we invited our first years back, and we're going to be spreading them out potentially across most of our undergraduate housing. We're going to try to uh, stay out of the Greek houses. Um, uh, if at all possible, those there's fraternity and sorority belongings that belong to the chapters in those facilities. Uh, and again, we're trying to densify campus so that classes and, and the gym and cafeterias and dining halls can all be utilized by the smaller number of students we've invited back. Uh, so yes, there will be some vacant uh, residence facilities on campus this fall. And what does it mean when I'm in one of these facilities? Can I visit my friends? Can I go down the hall? Can I go to another, another house? Can I open the windows? No, there's no window opening at all. Uh, uh, the, we're actually encouraging that when, <laughs> in most cases, so. Absolutely. Uh, can, can you visit people on your hall? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it, it, you're, that will be your, uh, five. You, one thing I want to mention is 
in each hallway, they will have a griffin, an RA, we call them at Lehigh, we call them griffins. Uh, and in some cases, there'll be more griffins because uh, our griffins were hired with a larger population uh, in mind. So we have the benefit and the luxury of making sure that these, uh, these staff members get spread out among the first years to really be attentive to their needs uh, during the fall semester. So, uh, you know, we'll have Griffins living on a floor of five first year students. So they'll be really attentive with them. That'll be like their little family to begin, uh, to begin the year with. Those will be the folks they'll meet. And as David suggested, we're gonna do our best to keep our uh, folks who have chosen each other as roommates on the same halls. Um, you know, we'll do our best. I'm not guaranteeing 100%, but certainly within the same buildings so that there is a connection. Uh, we'll do our best in that regard. Um, can they visit each other? Can they visit each other in the same building? Uh, yes, they can go from hall to hall. But what they can't do at least initially at the beginning of the year is to go from say one first year residence hall and visit another first year residence hall. The only people we want in those halls are the actual residents to keep that uh, as separate as possible. Can they go out, out and have a cup of coffee together or can they meet at it for lunch or, or whatever? Absolutely, uh, but the visitation piece at the beginning of the semester will be limited to only folks living in that hall. Uh, we will review that after a few weeks. And if there's any reason to be able to make a change to, to change that policy, we will make a change. But at least initially, it won't be uh, guests go wandering from building to building won't occur. And, and I just wanted to add that we'll include, you know, the expectation of social distancing, mask wearing, and all the, 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 um, the kind of personal behavior that we're asking everybody to abide by while they're at Lehigh. So, um, you know, it's not, uh, it, it still shouldn't be thought of a, what we think of as a family circumstance where everybody can just kind of be crowded in a room together. You don't have to worry about the mask. We still expect that. And, you know, and Ozzy pointed this out, you know, part of what we're really looking to do is provide uh, a, a, a smart start that gives us the flexibility to potentially loosen up. We'd much rather be in a situation where we can loosen up some of these um, restrictions rather than um, having to uh, put more in place. And uh, we feel that this scenario that we're starting out with gives us the most flexibility to anticipate that. Now, that's also, you know, the trick is, as we all are aware, <coughs> this you know, everything we're dealing with isn't necessarily even dependent on how our students are behaving, how our faculty and staff and, and so forth are behaving. A lot of this is the outside world. So we can, we can only do so much, but the hope is really that by having these um, uh, uh, um, rules in place, that we will be evaluating those and we are putting in the system in place to, to be able to adapt on the fly. And unfortunately, if we need to make them more restrictive, we also have that option. Um, but I will choose to be an optimist at this point. Yeah. Let's, let's um, move to some of the questions for those who are not living in the dorms, who might be living off campus. We talked in the previous hour about some limited access that they'll have to campus. They will have access, but it'll be limited. Uh, what does that mean for a meal plan? If I'm living off campus, can I still sign up for an on-campus meal plan? You can if you're off campus, however, you can't if you've chosen the fully remote option. So your, your access there is only limited to the health and wellness center. So if you're an off-campus student and you want to eat in dining, you should not choose the fully remote option. Okay, but if I'm living off campus and I am taking hybrid classes on campus uh, or any of those options, I can come in and choose a meal, meal plan. You can be on an actual meal plan or you can just come in and pay with cash or credit card or whatever else. Okay, great, yep. great. Any other impact that I should know about if I'm living off campus? Well, similar to, similar to access to dining would be access to our academic buildings as well as some of the other amenities such as, uh, such as Taylor Gym. 
Um, and this will follow the same rules that David outlined for dining, which is if you are fully remote, you will not have uh, access to any of the buildings on campus with the exception of the Health and Wellness Center. Um, we are making that facility available to any Lehigh student, regardless of their um, uh, whether they're fully remote or taking classes uh, in person. Um, so what this means is if you're, uh, you know, if you're fully remote, then you, you, the expectation is you won't be on campus at all. If you are, you may be living off campus, but not be, not taking, not um, selecting the fully remote option, in which case you would have access to uh, campus facilities. This is true even if you don't take an actual in-person class, but you choose, you, 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 you could still come to campus again for those amenities if you needed to use the library, if you needed to get something to eat, if you needed to go to the gym, if you needed to uh, go into uh, meet a department member or something like that, or a faculty member. Yeah, very good. Let's now talk about what happens if we do get into a quarantine situation. If I'm a student living in the dorms, how are we going to handle a need to quarantine? So I can jump in on that one. So it's, it's a bit of a complex process, um, but what we're asking is any student who has, in the first place, um, any student who has any symptoms uh, that could be consistent with COVID-19. So as people are probably aware, that symptom list is pretty long. Um, we're asking that those students call the health center. Stay in place, stay in your dorm, stay in your room, stay in your on or off campus housing, call the health center and talk with us about what your symptoms are or even what your contact was if you are, were exposed to somebody so that we can work out what the plan should be. So for quarantine, and again, quarantining is when you uh, separate somebody who is um, likely to have been exposed to the condition so that they do not go on then to infect somebody else if they themselves were infected. So if the issue is that you were exposed to somebody on your hall, say, is, is one that's kind of a simple question, say somebody on your residence hall develops COVID-19. Now, one thing to keep in mind is once there's a positive test, the Bethlehem Health Bureau, the Lehigh, um, our health center, we are gonna be working together to make sure that student is isolated and they're taken care of. The current plan, which I think is, I think is gonna work pretty well with only six people maximum, sharing a bathroom and each person having a single room. Um, when we look at that, that's almost kind of like a family unit. So think about if somebody in your family got ill, your family would then kind of quarantine or stay together. A similar kind of thing is going to hap happen in the residence halls. So if one person got sick, the difference is going to be from your home at Lehigh, we're going to relocate that sick person, sick meaning that has COVID-19, they're going to be relocated to isolation housing. The rest of the people on that dorm floor, that sorry, I'm old, so I think dorms, on that residence hall floor, the, that group of people will quarantine in place. They will quarantine in their residence hall locations. They all have single rooms. They're going to share a bathroom. Um, and then they will be, we will be in touch with them. The Bethlehem Health Bureau will be in touch with them and we'll monitor them during this 14 days. We are also going to be doing some targeted contact testing, um, meaning that if there's people that are in that close sort of bubble, if you will, of people who were exposed, we're gonna do some testing of those people. If there's another positive, again, we'll remove that positive from that quarantine group put them in isolation housing, the people that remain, even if their tests are negative, they still have to finish a 14-day quarantine. Um, during that time, meals and food will be delivered. Um, I would say that people need to be aware that this is a possibility, that they might be quarantined. They need to come prepared when they move into campus with thinking about, gee, what might I need for two weeks? Don't bring a trial size shampoo. Bring enough for two weeks. Um, 
you know, don't bring one day's worth of medication. Bring enough of your chronic medication so that you're prepared in case you should need to quarantine in your residence hall for that two week period. Um, if you are, we're just doing on campus people now, right? Right. Okay. Um, the other instance might be if your contact is with somebody not on your residence hall, but say from another contact on campus, though those we're going to have to evaluate each situation. So that's an instance where the health center, we are going to work with the Bethlehem Health Bureau and determining which contacts need to be, you know, is it a true contact and is their current living situation where they can stay or do we need to, we meaning Lehigh, need to put them in separate quarantine housing. Um, but we'll figure that out. Students that have signed on and are in in-campus housing, we are prepared to make arrangements for them, even if that included that they would need to be in a local hotel, Lehigh will take care of that. We'll make sure we make those arrangements. Um, you know, we will, we will take care of that. So it sounds like there's a lot of plans around that, Sarah. Is there a need for enforcement? How are we gonna make sure that I stay in quarantine? Well, you know, you could look at that and say that's a difficult question, but I, I wanna be an optimist and believe that people are really coming back because they want this to be successful. They want the campus to be able to stay open and they are willing to come back and do the right thing. So all of this process is us relying on everybody, faculty, staff, contractors, everybody being honest, doing the right thing. You know, we, there is no way any of us can police every item of this. There's just no way. Filling out the app, the app on the Hawk Watch every day about symptoms, being honest about whether you arrived from a hotspot state, we all are expected to be honest and to do the right thing. I can tell you in our health center, so our staff has been in the office, um, you know, we're doing staggered shifts, and we have had staff that call up in the morning and they say to me or their supervisor, you know what, I don't feel well. I know that this is probably nothing, I, but I have to tell you. And I'm like, yep, you do. Um, we arrange for a test, we take care of it, they stay home. They're, you know, they're healthcare workers. They don't want to stay home. They want to come to work. But we all have to, it's a weird world, but we all have to take that responsibility. And I, I believe that the students can do that just like everybody else can. So tell us a little bit more. That's a, a very good and popular question about my first arrival on campus. What do I need to do as far as testing? What do I need to do as far as quarantining? Yes, so I can take some of that. The quarantining, so students who are arriving from kind of the hot spot states, as is currently listed on the Pennsylvania Department of Health travel restriction site, um, they will need to quarantine after leaving any hot spot state and prior to coming onto Lehigh's campus. That is the expectation is that students and families will manage that on their own. Um, Lehigh is not able to, because right now Pennsylvania has 20 states on that list. New York State, I believe now has 30 states on that list. It wouldn't surprise me if Pennsylvania tagged on to those other 10 at any moment. Um, but it is the responsibility of students and families to make those quarantine arrangements themselves. That's the hot spot, re, you know, arrivals. That's separate from quarantine once they're on campus and now they've had a contact or exposure as part of their management on campus. Did you have another part of that question that I missed? What about um, the test kits? Oh yes, I'm so sorry. Um, so the test kits, that we're in the process of finalizing that, but what is going to happen, and everybody that is going to be returning to campus um, will be getting this information. So again, watch emails and watch the information that's coming out on the webpage that will provide details. This will not be an expense for the students returning. Lehigh is paying for this process. 
students will um, be given a link um, to the organization that is managing the testing and then they will provide what physical location or geographic location they're at for the test kit to be mailed. It will be a saliva specimen collection. So there's no blood, there's no needles, you don't have to go to any test site. Um, what you do is you log on, you, you make arrangements with this company and you log on for like a Zoom supervised collection. So basically the person on the other end of the Zoom talks you through the process, make sure you know how to do it, make sure you know how to screw the cap back on the container, that you know how to put it back in your mail, mail back, uh, mail return envelope. Um, and then you put that in an approved, um, it's going to be UPS, I believe, that you would put in that location and it gets sent to the company. Um, so I think it's going to be a pretty simple process. Um, it requires a little flexibility given our timeline. So, you know, people need to be kind of flexible and able to, you know, kind of do that. Um, and then that, those results will be provided to the student and to us at the health center. If somebody has a positive test from that, then, you know, clearly then we, they need to stay home until they are released from isolation. That will be a process that's gonna be kind of uh, um, uh, done in part by their local health, uh, public health entity, because once there's a positive case, a local health entity partly manages that. So that's gonna depend on where that student is. But the health center will also be in contact with that student so we can follow along um, you know, and help make sure we clear for when you come back just to let people know it's a minimum of 10 days. So even if you had a positive test, but you say, you know what, I feel great. Everything's fine. I don't, what's the problem? It's still 10 days from the date of the test. If you develop symptoms and become ill during that time, it might be longer than 10 days. So just to let people know they need to be a little flexible with their travel plans. So this is an important aspect of that. If I'm living off campus, Am I expected to quarantine off campus if I'm in that situation? If they have a positive test on the screening? Yes, now then it's called isolation. So once somebody is either symptomatic or has a positive, so symptomatic meaning suspected case, or once they've either tested positive or met criteria for um, being a positive. So what I can say is, there was a point in time in our local area that if a family member of somebody known to have COVID became ill because of limitations on test capacity, they were a presumed positive. I don't actually know if that's occurring in some of the really hot spots right now. Um, but again, just to let people know that they may be managed as a case even without a test positive in some of these areas if it's similar to how it was here earlier. But for the most part, once you have a positive case, whether you're off campus or not, you need to isolate, which means you stay home, you don't go out. If you're off campus and you're in off campus housing or with your family, that's where you need to isolate. You will not be brought on campus to do your isolation. So one last question on arriving at campus. Can families help move first years in? Is there a limitation on how many family members can help a freshman move in? Uh, yes, they're, they're, we're gonna ask that only two guests per uh, student come to campus to move uh, residents in, no more than two. Uh, obviously we're trying to uh, keep our social distancing in mind and limit the number of people going in and out of doors with high touch points, et cetera. So we are limiting it to two per resident. And maybe we should talk at this point about uh, move-in. Um, yeah, I was going to yeah, say, I think all those questions. I, I promise everyone, uh, we have not been hiding this from you. It just doesn't make sense to tell you about move-in plans until we had a a formalized uh, fall plan. So uh, Chris or, or 
David, jump in whenever you'd like. But uh, basically, it, it's a progression. So uh, we will find out on Wednesday of this week how, what students are coming back to campus. Uh, we will then do room assignments, hopefully, early next week. And we will provide a detailed move-in uh, plan after the room assignments go out for the simple reason the move-in and the room assignment is going to be connected because we are going to have uh, a, a move-in by appointment if you will to ensure that social distancing occurs uh, we do plan on inviting first year students uh, to move in on tuesday wednesday and thursday so that's tuesday the 18th wednesday the 19th and thursday the 20th uh, so they're here ready for virtual orientation to the campus. Uh, any upper class students who have permission and have gone through uh, the, uh, the vetting process and, are, and will be allowed to live on campus will come on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, okay? Friday the uh, 21st, Saturday the 22nd, and Sunday the 23rd. Uh, there will be a, uh, you'll be do, when we announce the plan, you'll be able to sign up through your uh, self-service module uh, for a specific time. And they'll be divided up into three hour blocks of time. So the individual student plus two guests will have the opportunity to come to campus on the three hour time block and move in uh, at their assigned time. This is not the way we typically do move-in. Uh, move-in is usually one of our favorite days of the year. Uh, we have volunteers all over campus helping to carry, but with social distancing and uh, to keep everyone as safe as possible, unfortunately, you're gonna be asked to move yourselves in. So you're the only one touching your belongings and moving them into your room. Um, there'll be three hour time blocks and unfortunately, you know, after that time block is over, uh, you know, we're going to ask that you say goodbye and, and mom and dad or, or whoever, uncle and aunt, move on and uh, make room for the next people coming in the, in the second or third time block of the day. The actual times for arrival on campus and to sign up uh, will be announced in the detailed plan. And that probably will go out, you know, hopefully Tuesday of next week. And we certainly do understand that that does not give you a lot of time to plan, but uh, you know it, the only way we could make this happen is to do it safely, so that everybody coming to campus uh, is is as safe as possible while while they're here. Especially our students will be staying here uh, and and beginning their college career. Good. So anything I miss, gang, on that? The only exception. Oh, oh go ahead, sir. No, I was just going to say to that point about families or or other people helping you move in, they're subject to the same um, kind of requirement for if they're coming from a hot spot state, they need to have quarantine somewhere else. So they shouldn't be just driving here or flying and meeting you here if they just are arriving from a hot spot state. And the other thing I was going to mention was you know, and it, it, it's sad because every year I've, I have only been at Lehigh about three years and it's so cool to watch everybody move in and, and it, so it will be weird and it will be different. Um, but I would encourage people to think about limiting how much they bring with them to what they really need. And I would say that partly because if things change and we have to change up either where individual people are housed um, or if students get ill and need to go home um, and their families, I mean, we, we have the potential that students will become, students will be ill and some of those students might be seriously ill. And students who are seriously ill might need somebody else or a family member to help with their belongings. And I only put that out there for people to just think about some of that when they're packing up and bringing their stuff. Yeah, I, uh, Sarah, I think that's a good reminder. We also need to keep in mind that you're only here until November 23rd, just before Thanksgiving anyway. So you probably don't need winter clothes, um, so pack lightly. 
And, and then what, David? After Thanksgiving, do I need to move everything out of my dorm rooms or do, can I leave stuff there? I'm going to let Ozzy answer that one. Uh, you know, I think everyone should anticipate the possibility that they may be asked to move all of their belongings out in November because we just don't know. We certainly don't know what the spring is going to bring us. We have no way of predicting that. Uh, the winter could bring many changes to the, to the virus where we could, it could get better and we could invite more people back and our whole housing configuration could change at that point. We'd have to start redoing things. So students may be asked to be in different rooms uh, beginning the spring semester. Uh, it may get even more restrictive. We have no idea. So, uh, you know, will everyone have to move everything out of their room? I, you know, I, today, I don't know if I will have to say this, but I certainly think you should anticipate that as a possibility as you're planning your strategy for what to bring to campus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those strategies are important. Chris, did I interrupt you? No, it's okay. If I can go back just to uh, the move and stuff that Ozzy talked about, it's important for the students that are in the hotspot states to know that um, if you have indicated to us or do indicate to us on the survey that you're filling out um, that you want to come to campus, you should expect a follow-up um, email from us very shortly after to talk about your quarantine plan. Um, so those students would be the exception, the people that are checking in on the dates that Ozzy moved. Um, essentially for students in hot spots, you as well as anybody that is going to come to campus to help you move in will arrive to the Lehigh Valley on the date that you have planned and you'll go straight to your designated quarantine location um, and you'll remain there for 14 days. Uh, once we have the 14 day quarantine and the negative test results for COVID working with the Health and Wellness Center, then we will schedule your check-in. Um, for a later arrival than the time frame that students are traveling from non hot spots. So it's just important information to know um, if at all possible, we're encouraging students in hot spots not to make travel arrangements until we're able to finish housing assignments and provide further guidance. Um, but I understand given the timing that a lot of people already have some travel arrangements um, in hand. And so just make sure that you're planning um, for that 14 day time frame outside of Lehigh's campus and that during that time you'll be expected to take classes remotely and at no time come to campus. Good, good information. So I think Sarah did a very good job establishing that it's a weird world and it's gonna, it's been a weird world, it's gonna continue to be a weird world, uh, but we are focused on health and safety as well as ensuring that education. So what might a day look like for those who are not fully remote, for those students who are not fully remote, What's campus going to look like? Uh, what access will students have to buildings? To we talked a little bit about the dining center, fitness centers, um, each other's friends. Can I eat with other people? Can you know what, what's it going to feel like when I walk around campus? I'll I'll start out, and I think probably the biggest change will be access to buildings. So previously, if you've been at Lehigh or visited Lehigh. Um, most of our academic buildings and uh, amenity buildings were open during the day, fully open. Doors were open. You would just walk in. If you had to go to the library, you'd walk into the library, go into the classroom building, dining hall, etc. with the exception of the residence halls. Um, starting this semester, the first change will be that the building, all the buildings will be locked. You'll be required to card swipe into the building, and this is where um, this goes back into the how access is granted, and this is true both of faculty, staff, and students that they need to go through certain steps in order to get that access turned on in, in order for you to be able to get into the buildings. Um, you're obviously going to see people wearing masks all around campus. Um, you'll be, whenever you're on campus, you'll be required to have a face covering. Uh, the, there are some exceptions to that. Obviously, when you're in your dorm room for people who work here, we make an, ex you know, when you're in a private office, you can take your mask off. Uh, when you're outside, uh, there's a little bit more leniency in terms of if you're, you know, sitting on the grass somewhere and you're um, not hanging out with anybody else, you can take your mask off. We are asking people to keep their masks on when they're walking around campus, mostly because some of the pathways get a little tight and, and we just want to maintain that, that distance and safety. 
Um, when you go into buildings, you'll see a lot of signs reminding everybody about a lot of these rules. You also see more limited seating. You'll see some rearrangements in some way, some places in terms of uh, how much furniture might have been in a location. Uh, areas for studying will have spread out the seating so that people uh, can be properly socially distanced. Um, you'll see uh, plexiglass shields at transaction areas where if you have to interact with somebody, you'll see this a lot in the dining halls, in fact, um, to uh, enhance protection. So there will be very physical reminders. Uh, I mean, this will not be a surprise. All of us, have, I presume a lot of us have been to grocery stores or other types of uh, uh, spaces like that in the course of the, the last few months and, and understand that some of the changes that happen physically. So you will see that uh, on campus. There are a couple of things we're adding. We are providing some tents uh, for outdoor space. These will be kind of for multi-purpose. Um, so students, if they wanna get something to eat, they can go eat in the tent. You can hang out and study in the tent. It's considered outdoor space. Uh, in most cases, we'll be keeping the sides open. Um, and that, that gives a little bit more uh, area for people to, uh, to sit and hang out um, in, uh, in, a, in a safe environment. So you'll see a lot of physical changes. I'm, maybe, um, David, if you want to talk a little bit about dining uh, in terms of the changes, I think you'll just see those uh, more in terms of um, the experience of like how you get your food and obviously sitting and eating, you won't be sitting at a table with five of your friends all crowded around the center uh, talking at this point, we're at, we're going to be asking for everybody to uh, to keep the distance, um, and we're changing our our layouts as much to support that. So, uh, David, do you want to yeah, pop in the, on that? Yeah, sure. We, we in in all the dining areas, we removed a lot of the seating, so it's going to look a little bit more bare. And as Brent said, you know, you're not going to be sitting with a group of ten friends. It's going to be two, three, maybe four people at a table, depending on the size of the table. Uh, as, as he mentioned, there's going to be signs everywhere, students wearing masks. Um, it's, the campus isn't going to be the hustle and bustle that you normally see at 9 o'clock when class is let out and kids are walking across Packer Avenue normally. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's going to have less people on it, obviously, so it's going to be a lot different. Can we keep going with that a little bit? Um, what will it look like as far as cleaning, you know, as far as custodial crews, as far as air filters, as far as all those things? Sure, I'm, I'm happy to talk about that. Um, that's ob obviously an area we've, we're putting a lot of resources into. Um, and so why don't we start first with the sanitizers and, and the, the things you'll see. So the things you'll see will include, every time you go into a building, there'll be a sanitizing station. Um, in addition to the signage and so forth. So people will have the opportunity to clean their hands. Um, you, will, uh, you will see a lot more people being in, in uh, spaces being cleaned. So we are going to be focusing on cleaning those public spaces on a, uh, on a more regular basis than we had done before. Our focus is really gonna shift to what we think of as the sanitizing approach. Uh, we use a product, it's a spray product that we use for sanitizing spaces. Um, and what this does is it's, uh, it basically, when, when spaces are not occupied, it kind of uses a, this mist approach, which hits all surfaces and, and guarantees that uh, they'll be clean. You also will, when you walk into a classroom, you'll see spray bottles and cleaning bottles. Uh, when you walk into other spaces, there'll be cleaning supplies around for people to take, to clean their own space. Uh, when they, uh, they start working or sitting down at a desk that is, that is a, in a shared public area. In terms of things you don't see, and, you know, and I talked a little bit about some of those cleaning protocols, we're also looking at enhancing the, the uh, air, the cleanliness of the air. There's been a lot of research lately on the um, uh, role of aerosols in, in spread, and so we're trying to mitigate that as much as possible. We have a range of buildings. Some of our newer buildings have the, the mechanical systems that we can tune and provide much higher levels of filtration. In other circumstances, we'll be uh, supplementing with air purifiers uh, in order to kind of keep that, maintain that, the, the cleanliness of the air. And in particular, some of the residential areas we've talked about, uh, which in some circumstances are in some of our older buildings, are also much more um, confined spaces and we'll be supplementing uh, areas in there with, uh, with the purifiers. Um, 
and we'll be uh, we'll be uh, some of the things you won't see. We'll be cleaning bathrooms more often. We'll be cleaning uh, spaces like that. So the bathrooms in the in the, the shared bathrooms in particular, I believe we're going to be cleaning twice a day, uh, which is much more frequent than we had done in the past. Um, even even in uh, bathrooms in closed suites, we'll be cleaning on a regular basis, which is a which is a new approach. So just, I mean, a lot of cleaning. And um, I think we, we expect that that will have a, a, a big difference. That's good, thanks. Um, so some questions coming in about, you know, people acknowledging, and we really understand that things are quite a bit up in the air. We realized that last spring, we had to close down pretty much all the campuses. Um, and Lehigh chose to prorate a, a refund. If Lehigh has to close down this fall, would there be, could we expect any kind of refund around housing and dining? Uh, yeah, I, I would say that if we closed up at uh, any point throughout the semester before it ended, that room and board charges would be prorated and refunds would be processed. Um, just note that financial aid awards can be uh, impacted by that uh, in, in, in some way, but yes, we would be providing refunds. Some questions coming in, Brent, after you just talked um, about Southside Commons, people who are living there. Can you talk to us about that? Well, we have the same protocols, cleaning protocols there as we would in the university dorm. So um, they, the Southside Commons is managed independently of Lehigh. So they do not fall under the, the Lehigh uh, umbrella in terms of both operations and in terms of the, the building itself. That being said, and, and Ozzy, I know you're aware of some of, their, uh, some of their steps, but based on the experience we've had with them so far and the safety plans they've submitted, they have a fairly robust planning process in place in terms of maintaining the space. The other thing is that is a modern facility with uh, updated HVAC systems and is also apartment style. So you don't have shared, the bathrooms are shared, uh, but that's within a, within a, spe a specific unit. So um, it is in many respects uh, as, a, as a more uh, modern uh, living facility, uh, better able to accommodate some of these needs um, than even some of the buildings we have on campus. Uh, so I don't know if that answers the question, um, but they, they, they have shared their safety plans with us. I think so. It looks like for the questions that are coming in, that, um, that answers at least most of the ones that I'm seeing. Um, let me go back to some of the uh, questions that are coming in um, around the ability to, um, to visit with each other as students, but also as parent or family coming in. We heard uh, Provost Urban last hour say, you know, we're not encouraging that, but we're not stopping that. So if I'm a family member, a parent who wants to come and visit, do I have to quarantine? Do I have to show a negative test? Will there be any requirements around that? So I think I can answer that partially. I think, you know, in ordinary times, everybody would love to have families come visit and see the campus and, and do all of that. I would say if families are coming from hotspot states, they should not come on campus until they've quarantined somewhere. If they want to quarantine somewhere in a non-hotspot state and then come to visit, you know, they're welcome to do that. Again, it wouldn't be within the residence halls or within the on-campus housing. Um, and I, I think it's important to look at this as not travel is one of the things in Pennsylvania right now that is significantly um, putting people at risk for the increase in cases in Pennsylvania, meaning many of the new cases and the uptick in Pennsylvania cases, which hasn't gone crazy yet, um, have been related to travel and people returning from travel. Um, so I, I think people need to take that really seriously, that now to help us make this semester successful and keep us open, limit that travel. Um, just, I, I would just limit it okay. or not have it. 
good advice. Chris, can I just clarify something? I think we're getting some questions uh, about the potential for first years to be assigned to suites and or apartments. And the answer to that is in order to keep our social distancing promise of uh, folks sharing no more than six to a bathroom, uh, we will need to put some first years in apartments and suites. So the, the, what that looks like is you'll have single bedrooms, um, uh, potentially four to a, three or four to a, an apartment or suite, and those individuals sharing one bathroom within that suite. Those are on a hallway with other suites, so there'll still be the ability to interact socially with others, uh, but their first years will be assigned to suites and in some cases apartments. Will they, be able to, will they be able to request which halls they're in or which suites? At this point, no. Uh, they, they did send, send some, uh, some preferences a long time ago. We do have them on file. Most of them have, uh, have connected with uh, roommates or some have connected with roommates. We'll do our best to keep them, um, but it will be somewhat of a random assignment process from this point on to get them housed as soon as possible. Yeah, I think what's important to know is that the normal first year housing process takes us about two weeks to look at all of their different preferences, whether it be themed or gendered or roommate, and get everybody into the housing that will work best for them. Um, the decision was made to keep roommates on the same floor whenever possible and definitely within the same building. Um, that alone will take us a, a decent amount of time, and, and our turnaround time is about half, if not even less than we normally have. Um, so we had to unfortunately do things like eliminate theme housing um, in order to make the turnaround time as quick as possible. And we also don't allow building preferences in the first year process anyhow. Um, so we thought that that was a justified move going forward to have it just be random building place and placement like it is um, in the regular process. When, when yeah. we, when, Go ahead, Ozzy. As when we talked about theme housing to see if we could somehow still put it together, uh, one of our staff members uh, said, this semester is going to be, everyone's going to have a similar theme and it's going to be living within the confines of the virus, taking care of each other, being safe and adapting to this new, new uh, scenario. So that's going to be our theme for all of our first year students. Yeah, and, and, and let me add on, on the housing side, I think it's important to note if a student is in a, gonna be in a single, it was probably a double room or possibly a triple room before. Furniture will not be removed. They can shift it around, move it around in, within that room themselves, but it will not be removed. Good, yeah, I saw that question coming in too. What about if, if I know the people who are gonna be on my floor, or even if I don't at the beginning of the semester, I certainly will in a short amount of time, do I still have to wear a mask when I just walk down the hall when I visit one of my friends? Yes. You, the expectation is when you're not in your individual sleeping bedroom, that mask will be required. And if I'm visiting a friend in their bedroom, even though it was not my bedroom, well, I need to wear a mask. The answer is yes. Good, okay. Nice, nice definitive answer, Ozzy. Thank you. So this is a lot of information. I know we're a little bit over time, so I appreciate those who are still with us. Um, let me ask a question that has come up a few times. Now that we're learning all this information, can I change my mind? When, when do I, am I locked into my housing decision or dining meal plan decision? Mm -hmm. Well, we're asking students to make their decision about coming to campus by tomorrow night at 11 p.m. Um, obviously, your situation at home where you are right now can change. The situation in Pennsylvania can change. So we understand that tomorrow night's decision isn't a black and white answer. Um, we're asking for, you know, where you're at right now and whether you prefer to come to campus or prefer to stay home. Um, if your situation changes after that, we'll certainly work with you um, in regards to your housing and dining. Um, we've even had students inquire about, you know, if I come and two weeks in, it's not working for me, I need to go home, you know, 
what would housing and dining look like? And, and we'll prorate that based on however long you've stayed there. Um, the main thing to know is that you won't get the tuition discount um, once classes start if you change learning modes. Um, but we'll definitely be able to work with you with the housing side if things don't work out. Okay, very good. We talked about this, but there's still some questions too um, on the test kits. Uh, so first, uh, perhaps Sarah, again, can you relate, how am I gonna receive my test kit? So test kit students will need to log on to the link that they're provided. Um, and then they will provide information to the testing uh, company. And then that company will be sending, I believe it's going to be sent to the students by UPS. Students will need to provide whatever address they're going to be at so it can be sent to them there. And then that test kit will have everything in it that they need to be able to collect the saliva specimen and to ship it back. Um, and they will have instructions on how to contact the company the day they have their test kit so they can set up a, a time via Zoom to have that collection monitored. And, and really it's, it's good because then you have somebody there that can talk you through, you know, I can't get the cap screwed on tight and do I lick the envelope and, you know, all those details. Um, Yes. What can I expect once I'm on campus? I, am I going to be tested regularly? So the current plan is once people are on campus, there will be another round of testing. Again, students won't have to leave campus for this. It's not going to be at students' expense. Um, the exact timing of when that's going to happen after people are on campus is still being finalized. Um, and then there is likely going to be some type of surveillance type of testing during the semester, um, but not necessarily, it's, it's I think more likely going to be a sampling of uh, the population throughout the semester, but that is also being finalized. So I don't wanna put out there an absolute, but again, it's not gonna require students to, you know, leave campus for it. It's, you know, we're gonna make that as, as sort of easy as possible for people. Thank you. Um, I know we've gone over time. Uh, we've tried to squeeze in a few more questions. I'm certain we haven't answered all of them, um, but we will keep the communications coming. Um, hopefully we've answered a lot of them. So as we close up, Brent, I'm gonna go back to you. Are there any, any last messages you'd like to leave us with? Well, I, I, again, I think I'd like to reiterate with some of the things we talked about at the beginning, which is We've heard a lot of detail. There's even more detail. We're just skimming the surface of a lot of the things that have been thought about. <laughs> and really just that, uh, you know, we are continuing to work through these policies, these processes, and mindful of the fact that we are looking to provide what will be a very unique Lehigh experience, but still undoubtedly a Lehigh experience, uh, but one with uh, as much safety uh, as possible. Uh, to ensure that, you know, we have a, a quality semester and that everybody stays here for the whole semester. And um, as I said before, I'm, I, I'm very optimistic about it. I think we have a, a, a pretty good plan. We will probably be adjusting the plan as we go forward because it, you know, things will change both on campus and outside of campus. Uh, but I hope, uh, I hope we've been able to answer a lot of the questions that are out there. And uh, we really look forward to everybody uh, arriving. All right. Thank you, Brent. Thank you to all of our panelists. We appreciate everybody who was able to join us in what, whatever time zone you were in. I think we've got people pretty much all in every time zone on the planet. Uh, glad you could make it. We want to remind you that this recording will be available on the COVID-19 information uh, webpage on the Lehigh website uh, shortly after we conclude here. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll keep Keep working forward and we hope to hear more from you soon as far as uh, more information that we can share. Good night, everybody. Stay well and stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.